Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit Hello. back, relax, take that midweek <laughs> break, talk about the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and everything else related to penguins, apparently. Yeah, That's something we do. <laughs> hey, I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. We're here with you live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Moon Time. Come check us out on Twitch. It's beautiful. Or after the fact podcast form video form we even put that up like three people watch it it's a little bit terrifying uh <laughs> pedro we you know he's he's not with us this week he's gone yeah yeah well last last week i wasn't here so jordan filled in for me so thank you again to jordan for that and now pedro is gone this week and next week and i will miss him very much <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say the same, man. Um, <laughs> oh, nah, it's I've been, awesome. yeah, and I've been really enjoying watching CES coverage this week, especially finding out that the AMD booth has a Thelio uh, by System Seventy Six. Uh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's kind of neat, wasn't? It? I'm like, oh, yeah. Yay. I like. I, man, okay, I can look over the wood, and I'm like, it's not bad. Everything is great about that box. Until mm -hmm. you get to the ports on the back that are machined yeah. into the case. I'm like, oh, that's only ever going to work with that motherboard ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. They they are working on that, on um, <laughs> modifying it. <laughs> well, they could just go back to using a backplate. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the computer. But, hey, man, I get it. It's a style thing, you know, um, form over function. All that beautiful stuff. Uh, not a lot going on. Just been mm -hmm. sitting back not getting anything done because I've been watching and kicking some coin too. a few shackles in the direction of uh, games done quick. Ah, They're doing nice, their marathon. Ben. They're on Twitch. Yeah. They're doing a little battle for cancer. And um, it's always good to help those lot out. And it's entertaining to watch stuff that I just breaks my mind. I watched really good uh, fallout four where they've just decimated that poor mm. game. To such an extent, and it made me happy. Then they do classic games, you know, like Castlevania and stuff like that. So I think it's pretty neat. Pretty good Very times. cool. But. Very cool. <laughs> but, but, but. Last <laughs> week and the week before, we were talking all about, you know, end of year review stuff. And it's like, this is what we got accomplished with our project and this project. Now we have to do the 2020 predictions because that's definitely going to be a thing. Starting off oh, yes. with a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big one. GGL 2019. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the really important thing in this one, I mean, it starts off with something they talk about, which is lessons learned. Because they realize that, you know, while the game, you know, through 2019, 2018, mm -hmm. when they were making regular updated, you know, just regular updates, rolling them out. They were not making it into the stable branch. And yes. they noticed mm -hmm. that some of the contributions were drying up, um, code con contributions. And it kind of made the project look stale because yeah. you were seeing, okay, this is my one like, version and I haven't got a new version in two years and all that fun stuff. I mean, it makes sense. You know, if you're going to contribute code to a project, you want to see it in use by people. So the big takeaway from me or was that, you know, going forward, they're going to be pushing out stable releases on Yay. a more regular schedule. Mm -hmm. And they got a bunch of stuff in here about tools and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of really good innovation in the in the GIMP. But yes, it hadn't been coming to Stable Branch, and now it will. And that is just wonderful. And another thing you can do is contribute to all aspects of GIMP development and help out by doing code, UI UX design, creating plugins and effects, and yes, even help with documentation. They always need that. And uh, one of the most important uh, aspects to helping the GIMP out is just to create artwork in the GIMP and tell people about it. Um, this was actually kind of cool because this semester I had several students who did this very, very thing. They were using GIMP instead of Photoshop for some of their other classes, and they were telling their teachers and the students about it. And it was just great. It was awesome. <laughs> and no, not you. You don't get to make that art and share it. You know who I'm talking about. Um, a couple of the things in there that are going to have improved file format support. One thing that kind of shocked me recently with GIMP was... 
there's no built-in support for WebP. I was like, huh, how about JPEG 2000? And it laughed at me again. Oh, Just, yes. I, I made the mistake of trying to appease the um, Google website calculator. It's like, fix this thing, <laughs> spend days on it, and ha-ha, next week I will change it. But uh, they do say that they're going to be adding better performance, uh, with especially with a paint buffer on every dab. I'm not doing a dab. Um, with the PixMap, so if those haven't changed. And uh, saving and exporting layer in groups and rendering great gear. Eh, English, old man. Grayscale workflows um, are yes. going to be a lot faster thanks to changes in the Babel library. That's pretty cool. Uh, just such an awesome project, man. Yeah, it is. This year they they um, nailed it. It, it. it they with the user interface changes and the speed and and all the little UI UX changes mm -hmm. and everything under the hood has been, you know, redone and reworked and. The Gaggle Library. It's awesome. <laughs> well, we don't have Katie. Well, we do have Katie. We don't have Pedro here, so I can't throw it to him. You'll come in a yeah. close second. <laughs> yes. So the KDE roadmap for 2020 looks bright. Um, here are some of the features that we can expect to see, are likely to see, and possibly we'll see this year. Um, the KDE input output file library and Dolphin only has a single patch left to turn privileged escalation on. Yay! So you don't have to run Dolphin as root to move, create, rename, etc. root owned files. Um, that's a big deal because that's always been a pain. <laughs> and a lot of the file managers, you know, let you uh, uh, move root privileged uh, files around. So this is this is nice KDE. Get, Wonderful. And I knew this was a problem, but should be fixed this year. Auto rotation for tablets, convertibles, and other hardware with rotation sensors. Yeah, I, I knew that was a problem. A lot of people complained whenever they put plasma on any of their mobile devices that rotation doesn't usually work. So if you run <laughs> so... KDE, can you only listen to Daft Punk? <laughs> uh, yes. And the Tron Legacy soundtrack. Okay, got it. Yes. <laughs> that tracks. Yeah. That was awesome, but that's that's beautiful. And and what was just shown on the screen there, um, likely KDE's can con gonna continue KDE's consistency of unification of the apps and user interface by implement implementing more of the proposed visual design changes to the Breeze style Plasma and KDE apps to make it more unified experience and look more beautiful. So that's always a good thing. They're following in the footsteps of GNOME, and that's been a promise, and they have been keeping it. So there's a lot of really good things going forward in KDE we have to look forward to this year. Really great. You left out the big one. <laughs> uh, Wallpapers. The big one. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, nicer wallpapers and 4k and ones that work correctly that's been an issue <laughs> uh, you know better wallpapers in there i i don't know i don't use wallpapers i am allergic <laughs> to them but that's really cool well the one thing that caught my interest is something they brought up in the end and it's the moonshot stuff which if you're unfamiliar with that term, it's stuff that we'd mm -hmm. like to do but we're not going to commit to it but yes. here we go swing and a miss was mm -hmm. the per scale factors for X11. I know, um, that's per, gonna be very, scale. very, yeah, very, very good. <laughs> um, I'm almost willing to bet that all of my screens will be UA arms. I'm picking on KDE, but before we <laughs> see this in X11 with KDE or anything like that, I'll just have UHD screens everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yes. That's pretty cool though. I'm down with it. Uh, Blender? Yes. We're not done. Oh. Just one more 2020 roadmap. <laughs> yes. And this comes to us thank, thanks to M. Fox Dog in chat. And, you know, Blender has had an amazing year. And with the release of Blender 2.8 in October, uh, made Blender a game changer in the industry. Because now the user interface is very similar to the workflow of the other ma major 3D animation packages out there, like Maya and 3D Studio. And uh, one of the uh, some of the highlights from this last year, it's, it's just been amazing, is Tan Rosendahl receiving an Asifa Hollywood Annie Award for Blender. Uh, 
that was a very big deal. Um, and the release of the Spring Blender open movie uh, was their, their best movie they've ever done. It was just, it was um, absolutely amazing. They also received an How epic- How dare you, Big Buck Bunny. <laughs> Oh yes, Big Buck Bunny. Yes, that was uh, that was their original and still one of my first loves. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and Blender received an Epic Games Mega Grant. Um, <laughs> they received theirs just for before Matthew received his for Lutris. And Ubisoft and other major studios are using Blender, and we've talked about that a lot here on LWW. And one of the major things uh, that happened this year was their presence at Seagraph, Seagraph Los Angeles, which is the world's largest animation convention. They had gone every year for many, many years, and people just looked at them as a, as a small, you know, animation studio, because a, a lot of the small animation studios use their product. And But now Blender was looked upon as a first-class citizen. And that is just huge. Uh, companies were coming up to um, Tom Rosendahl, CEO of Blender, and um, everywhere from AMD to NVIDIA uh, to Autodesk, and uh, the list goes on and on. And with the advent of the Academy Software Foundation, Blender became the go-to for open source animation projects and the example set in the industry. So that was really, really huge. And they didn't talk about the Academy Software Foundation in the article, but that was uh, something very important to bring up. <laughs> Do you know what I think Blender really needs? <laughs> what, Ben? A game engine. <laughs> ah, yes, the failed one <laughs> from previous years. Except for well, that you know, one skateboarding game, that <laughs> one brave soul. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> then there was an attempt uh, before that. It was a uh, Centel. The yes. The yeah. Yeah. With the, the very abstract um, art and models in the abstract world and you interacted with them with music and, and whatnot. <laughs> that think, was cool. I think Centel was a, a female protagonist with a stick, but that could oh, be okay. mistaken as abstract. Um, <laughs> okay. Different game then. You get smacked <laughs> enough with a stick. Everything's abstract, man. Blender yeah. is such a cool project. <laughs> Always looking forward. And... and <laughs> Here's the truth mm -hmm. with me with Blender. I only use Blender when I'm forced to, and I immediately <laughs> try to forget everything I just learned. So it's out of my brain. This Aww. is not a valid strategy because, like, once a year I get stuck having to use it. And this is because I'm a bit rubbish at doing 3D stuff. And, uh, but it, it's good. Yeah. It keeps on trucking. Well, I'm moving all my students onto Blender. They're no longer learning Autodesk 3D S Max and um, still doing some Maya because, of course, Maya is for Linux, but all the Linux based applications um, are my focus now for my students. Well, that makes <laughs> sense, especially. I mean, it's yes. good to see the adoption <laughs> mm -hmm. of Blender into production studios simply as yes. like, yes, this is what we're just going to use now. Why? It works on everything and there's yeah. no per seat license. Hey, where's the dongle? There isn't one. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Well, you know, even Pixar and DreamWorks are using it in their tool chain now. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. It's, <laughs> it's an extremely powerful piece of software and it's open source. So yes. How's that going for it? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's our predictions from everyone with the roadmaps for 2020. <laughs> Let's talk about something a little more entertaining. Killing your laptop. Mm -hmm. Just not the way ah. you expect, man. Yes. A Linux. <laughs> Kill cord, right? Bus kill a USB kill cord for your laptop. And what is it? I mean, it triggers next screensaver to lock the screen every time any USB drive is removed. Now, you could set this trigger to do various things like shut down or, you know, just lock it or drop to a TTY or something like that. Here's a nice little demo for everyone watching <laughs> the video version. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and that's neat see that's a good way to do it with like a usb to a magnetic connector yes it's yeah. very smart <laughs> but um how much is this going to cost man because this is something you get a brew for yourself yeah and all the parts can be had for 20 to 45 dollars depending on your needs and what size uh flash drive you get and how much the cable is <laughs> So, oh, I'm sure if you, you go to AliExpress, you can get everything for 20 bucks. 
<laughs> so <laughs> that is definitely a thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. When you think about it. So the principle of this is you, you're going to take a USB cord, hook it in, but then you're going to have the other end of the cable attached to your persons. Yes. Yes. In theory, <laughs> in theory, we all know this ends up with your uh -huh. laptop on the floor. Yes. <laughs> there is that. And the other worry I had is that I might forget that is it is hooked up to my laptop and accidentally activate it myself by moving away or just like by going to the bathroom in a public place. <laughs> You know, like Starbucks. Well, well, if you do that and you come back and the worst thing that's happened is you forget in your password, you have larger problems like early onset Alzheimer's. But yeah, <laughs> I, I just thought about like how many devices I've picked up that were still attached via USB. To, and it just that little mm -hmm. mini USB has pulled staggering amounts of weights and other things loose. And I'm like, whoa, OK. Yeah, yeah. That would happen. That's the thing. I like how he has set it up. With um, you know, it worked better with a magnetic connector because that yes. would that would help prevent the oh phew, going zooming across. But I think it's very neat. Um, now yeah. this this is a tame mm -hmm. little kitten compared to something like uh, Silk Guardian. If you go look yes. at that, up, because mm -hmm. that that doesn't play around. That's like oh no, Alphabet Agency knocking <laughs> on the door because I mean that Silk. It's going to wipe your RAM. It'll just nuke anything you tell it to, turn off the computer. And it's like, oh, that's not suspicious. But this is a fun project. That's something you could set up. Do it to mess with your friends. I mean, be yeah. good like that. Really cool. I really was impressed. Okay. Well, I didn't put this in the show notes because it's too blinky. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is uh, Chaffa. Chaffa is a command line utility that converts all kinds of images, including animated GIFs into ANSI Unicode character output that can be displayed in a terminal. Yes, remember the BBS days. Yay, that was, I, I love those those days. And uh, so ANSI art is, so for those of you that don't know, is a computer art form that was widely used at one time on BBSs. It is similar to ASCII art, but constructed from a larger set of 256 letters, numbers, and symbols, and was used in MS-DOS and Unix environments. And it's it's what's really cool is Chaffa is actually a very highly configurable and supports alpha trans transparency and multiple color modes, including true color, 256 color, 16 colors, and simple um, FGBG uh, color. And as you can see, you know it's it's far more complex than than let's say ASCII, which is a uh, can only be just a few colors, either black and white or or um, several colors. So, but I had fun converting and running uni a, a unicorn GIF to 256 color, 16 and two color output. And it worked really, really well. Actually, it was amazing how fast it is. It's really instantaneous on today's computers. And I used to wait quite a long time back in the 386 days to convert my artwork to ANSI graphics. So believe it or not, it used to take quite a bit of time to convert to these formats, but <laughs> not today. So it'd been a long time since I played with ANSI. And this utility was just so much fun. I enjoyed it <laughs> a lot and will enjoy it more. <laughs> Hipster. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I do enjoy running the CACA and AA Live on Linux, and uh, this is this is uh, another way you can do that. Uh, did did you take a break from watching Star Wars and ASCII? Yes, <laughs> and this time I decided, oh, I want more colors, <laughs> uh, more characters, a little higher resolution in my terminal. <laughs> See, I definitely grew up around the same time. You know what? I don't miss any of it. Like, nope. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, I used to love creating. Palette. I'm like, nope, yeah. uh -uh, don't like that. Nope. <laughs> I used to love creating ANSI artwork and BBSs. And, and I used to bring it into my animation programs back I, in the 80s. <laughs> I 100% like understand the skill. And, you know, I've definitely watched my fair share of like BBS docs of like ASCII yes. art. That I yes. don't have a problem with. That took time. That took skill. This does cheating. 
<laughs> it is kind of, yes. <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> it's still a cool effect, man. It is 100%. So <laughs> if you want to be like the uber hipster and like the ASCII art generator is not enough for you, man, you can measure your bandwidth in the terminal with this <laughs> handy bandwidth utilization tool, which is just called Bandwitch. That's what I like. Yes. It's not like the brood witch. <laughs> It has tomatoes that you don't have to eat, but yeah, check it, it out. It used man. to be called Witch. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I like it, man. You know, it's a CLI yeah, I like utility. It better. It's going to display your current <laughs> network utilization, and it will show connections to remote host names. It's also going to attempt to resolve IPs by those host names via reverse DNS. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's available for mm -hmm. Arch, Mac, other Linux flavors. Um, no, I'm not going to install it through Rust. Ha, huh? no. <laughs> yes. There are pre-built binaries for it. I don't know. Do you ever mm -hmm. run into situations where if I'm going to be on the um, command line looking at bandwidth, I'm using something like NetHog. Mm, okay. I guess this was like yeah. just like a quick tool. I'm like, what's eating all this? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like HTOP or TOP for networking, which oh, is really cool. There's NetTOP. Yeah. Yeah. The, and that, that was the other, that's the one I'm usually using. <laughs> so <laughs> and I, that, that's a thing too. Well, that stupid mm -hmm. router I picked up. Um, I don't have to mess around with this peasantry anymore. I have it generate graphs for me on a weekly basis, mm. <laughs> which I never look at. I just set it up one time to make it do it. I was like, this thing generates graphs. What? Okay. Do it. Mm -hmm. This is a cool project. Um, if you're curious, uh, Give it a look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. It was really cool. <laughs> so I get a continuing series. That oh. I've been working on. Yes, you do, Matt. Ven. It's awesome. What was my original name? What did you call me initially? What was my Christian name there? Ven, <laughs> ven Stone? <laughs> Mitt, I mean, Ven. You got confused? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mitch? Is, is no. I didn't say Mitch. Back that tape. Up. I I might have said Ben, Ben, but I right. meant Ben. Right. Ben, <laughs> Duh. do I look like a Skywalker? Um, yes, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> okay, check this out. I made a thing which I do every now and then uh, to try to ooh, like share some of the knowledge, and this one, this one's not necessarily Linux one hundred percent, but these are some tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. Uh, about if you've ever done any type of recording, be it high Gandalf <laughs> with um, anything, really. I mean, you might run into a nice little thing called a 60 hertz hum, a ground loop, that little zzz in the background. So in this, I'm going to walk you through a couple of things that don't work to get rid of hum versus two things that are wicked cheap. No, come back. That will. <laughs> Basically, mm -hmm. a ground loop um, isolator from Pile, which is, you know, it's non-powered. You just plug it in. It works. And um, Adium USB isolators, those are great. They get the job done. And where you can pick those up, that's kind of brilliant. Which will... Yeah. Uh, and if you're wondering, like, hey, man, I don't know if I have, like, a 60 hertz hum a lot. I see a lot with laptops, mm -hmm. though, I've plugged yes. in. I'm like, I got my USB DAC, but when I'm recording something or if I'm trying to listen, listen to something, I'm hearing that mm. easiest way to find it, mm -hmm. unplug the laptop where it's running on DC. If it goes away, that's what you got. This is going to fix it. And other stuff, just I've seen the list of like, well, why don't you use it? Never use a cheater plug. Cheater plug is a plug without a ground pin on it. That's a good way to get shocked. Don't do it. <laughs> Also, you know, I, I was just like, oh, well, run a ground cable to your water pipes. Just, just pick up something. Like, these are like 12 <laughs> to $14. They'll get you sorted. But continuing with the series, up right now for patrons, I have a new video and guide for doing something where you can record. And let's say if I'm talking and Jill's talking, right? <laughs> Jill, pretend you're talking. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, Obi Vaughn, Ven Kenobi, you're my only hope. <laughs> Man, you're screwed. Um, check this out. 
So we were doing with that, and let's say like we were doing a regular recording, and that was just one stereo pair, and Jill's like, Ree! and like laughs, like, whoa, that's a bit loud. I need to take that down. <laughs> well, what I'm going to be covering with your existing hardware, where you don't need anything fancy at all, just like a USB mic and your standard sound card, how to set up UB, um, OBS to do two tracks when you record. So you can go back and take that into an audio editor like Audacity and change the volume of one side versus the other independently before you mix it down into a single track. So nice. that's something you mm -hmm. should be doing. And there's a good example in that video of like, whoops, I messed up when I was showing everyone. It's a good thing we did this. So look <laughs> forward to that. And as always, uh, that video will be made for uh, general consumption when the next one comes out, which will be dealing with mix minus. And how do you get rid of like ducking in audio? Because mm. that was another thing that took us yeah. a minute to <laughs> get sorted. All right. So, <laughs> Jill. Yay. So I got another gift from Mike G. Um, two weeks ago, he gifted me a blue penguin. And now I have this cute plushy pink penguin. It's so cute. <laughs> a lot of people said it looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much again, Mike G. I love my penguins. So next week you will see it over in the pile. <laughs> it's kind it's of so brilliant. cute. Um, yeah. Isn't that so sweet? <laughs> definitely want to throw some love at that. Yeah, Mike. There's Mike. Mike and Mary Carl. See, yes, there you, you are, Mike G. <laughs> you got to be careful. If you get anything off of our wish zone, especially if you get for the studio, we'll embarrass you live on this back wall constantly. But hey, man, if you want to support the show, <laughs> the best way to do that is patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That lets us do a budget, kick us a few shekels every week, and you get some stuff like the videos that uh, I work on a little bit earlier mm -hmm. than everyone. We like to sweeten that up. Also, you get uh, an extra show every week, the pre pre super shows. And which takes place when we do it live. If you want to come check that out in your podcasting feed, along with um, access to audio only streams for everything that we do. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for making that possible. Oh, let's see what else. Shameless plugs. <laughs> uh, if you are curious about the equipment yes. in the studio, I have everything <laughs> itemized. Go check that out. You don't have to buy it through Amazon, buy it through New Ego or your local provider. Let's see. What do I have lined up? That's our wish zone for the studio. It's boring stuff like hard drives and fans. And yeah. of course, <laughs> merch. Yay, see, which I'm wearing right now. I got my one of my LWW shirts on. It's one of Yay. them. Yay. Should... <laughs> yeah, I have two. This is this is the men's. <laughs> I have the women's as well. <laughs> All right. Suck it, Steve. You don't get that one. Um, <laughs> that's kind of brilliant. <laughs> all right let's get yeah, into yeah. a slice of pie just one this week yeah e how do, how do we pronounce that elagu elagu right. elagu smart robot car kit version 3.0 i want a dumb <laughs> robot car kit and danger car. <laughs> yeah <laughs> And this is an awesome, you know, robotic car kit. Actually, this is one of the ways you can you can build a robot that that um, actually follows a line that you draw. I, I've seen people use the robot cars for that. I don't and need for, that. I would draw the line. Yeah, <laughs> that's just danger. And and actually for oh gosh, emergency situations where you need to put a small vehicle, you know, on the field um, to find things. And um, you could use AI on it to uh, find everything from your cat or your dog out in the real world. <laughs> I've actually seen them used for that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but one of the big things with this is it comes as a full kit. You just pick it up. Yeah. Done. You can play with it. So, I, yeah, great time for gifts, right? And you're like, oops, you're about a week too late. Oh, four weeks a week late too late. That. Yeah. <laughs> but, this, but this. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, like Ven was saying, this is awesome because it's a, a kit that you can build yourself and all the instructions are there. It's actually, it's, it's not very hard to do and would not take actually maybe an afternoon. So this would be really, really fun. That's pretty cool. And, I'm down with this. Yeah. And, you know, it's using an Arduino. And yeah. If you don't know, like, what are those? It's like, that's what we had to use back in my day. Be quiet. Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, pre-Raspberry Pi, we had only the Arduinos. 
but system on chip. That's an SOC, <laughs> but it definitely gives you a better grasp of working with limited resources. And um, if you're like, hey, how does exactly. embedded editing thing work? I'm like, yeah. And there's a ton of scripts to play around with. Yeah. So. Definitely. Need to go check <laughs> that out. AI. <laughs> Hey man, it's true AI straighter. It follows the line. If it wasn't real AI, it wouldn't be able to follow the line. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe you're working on a project made of artificial intelligence. You want to tell us about it and we could do that and talk about it. Or we have a question. Maybe we got something right. Maybe we got something wrong, terribly mm -hmm. wrong. And you f need to tell us about it fiercely and correct it. Next case CDS. You can do that. LettingTeamCast.com, tap that contact button, fam, and also pick yeah. the right show, fam, for this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> WDW. Give us a name. Give us an email that resolves. You can make up one. Just make sure it's a real one. Give us a message. Then tap that send button. If you mm -hmm. have a project or something like that, something with a bunch of links in it, send it to the email address listed on the page. Because if you don't, the spam golem is going to be like a mm -hmm. cat when you set something like, on a table, it's yeah. going to swat it. And I will never see it. It'll be a thing. You can <laughs> also leave some comments, thoughts, hints, and suggestions in our YouTube. Yes. <laughs> but do keep in mind, everyone else does, and we have over a thousand videos, so I can open up like the comment section, and any given day, it's going to have more than I'm going to have time to read. So there's your warning. Mm -hmm. Jill, we Yay! do have a little bit. Yes, we do. So this comes to us from Tadley. Can you make a statement in regards to latency with that thing? Question mark. Is it astronomically high or could you actually game using it? Question mark. I've got a fancy KVM Vin Windows guest set up with PCI pass through for the GPU and looking glass gives me a huge FPS penalty and an HDMI capture card could work or be a workaround for that. Uh, yes, <laughs> definitely. I don't. I don't have any experience with the lo using Looking Glass GPU pass through. No, that, that, um, it's Windows like typing detected. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, if you're playing around with something, like that, this is in reference to the USB three HDMI card. Yes. That I um, did a little bit of review on. It's like the stupid cheap one. It's like sixty bucks, right? Hmm. And you don't expect a lot for that, but you get yeah. what you pay for. And apparently latency is an issue with some of the cheaper. If you see a $30 capture card, just let it go. Baby. Yeah, let, let it, it go. go. Yeah. The U3 HDMI cards that the one I did this video on, you can find it in that little list thing I posted earlier. It'll be in the show notes. Um, latency is nearly imperceptible with that. It's good enough to where you could play Rocket league through obs mm -hmm. without a deal you don't notice it i'm using it right now to send return video yeah. to jill this is mm -hmm. coming out of, of a black magic card and it's getting captured into one of the computers so i mean it's near imperceptible i wouldn't try to play smash bros with it so yeah. you know if you're doing like pixel perfect or anything like that don't bother with it but for regular desktop stuff you're not you're not going to notice it so yeah, and Ven, isn't the chipset very similar to the Elgato, or it uses the same chipset, but it's only sixty dollars? No, EVR of, Media. Oh, 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 Aver Media. Okay. That was <laughs> yeah. I was poking and prodding with those. Uh, if you're going to use one, don't worry about it. Don't buy more than two. I have six. Oh. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> we have backups. We have spares. That, that's something you want to keep in mind. Like if you're ever going down that route, if you just need one, you want to play with it. Yeah, pick up something like that. If you're planning on doing like multi setups, it's it's better to just pay the piper, man, and get uh, some black magic or Magewell hardware, which I totally avoided. It was like the flying spaghetti monster was teasing me earlier this week, Jill, because. Mm. One of those four <laughs> port Magewell cards showed up, and those things are uh, nine hundred dollars. Those are awesome. And it was for three yeah. three hundred and fifty dollars. I didn't buy it. Not. Nope. Oh, okay. I tried. I was going to say, not bad. <laughs> no, the only, see, that was the problem. If I bought that, it would have. I couldn't have like kept it. I'm like, I can turn around and sell this thing for six hundred dollars, easy, long as it works. So I decided not to. All right, beautiful people. We're going to bounce out okay. of here. Um, is Pedro going to be back next week? 
I don't know. Nope. I don't think so. Maybe. Think, uh... Maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> Let's find out. But until then, we're going to roll some credits. Huh? Okay. Maybe. If I can find them. Yay. And thank you to Lucifer uh, Zazzle for the follow and Sinise Omega for the follow. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, Rip Pedro. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you to Ben Stone. And I'm Jill Bryant. And thank you to our wonderful patrons, our executive producers, and our producers. We love you all. And thank you for coming, uh, being a part of our live stream and chat. We love you all. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Just keep giving and giving, and it's amazing. It's it's it makes all our hard work worth it, <laughs> definitely. And I can't believe it's the two hundred and fourth episode of LWW. Amazing. <laughs> Just remember, kids, thoughts and opinions expressed by Joe Bryant do not necessarily reflect those of Wedding Screamcast LLP. <laughs> yes, Ben. Okay. <laughs> bye bye.